Okay, so next case is uh, buyer of the put option and the formula is uh, the difference is uh, instead of uh, deducting the uh, strike price from future spot price, we are going to deduct future spot price from the strike price. And in this case, premium is negative because we know buyer of call option uh, is buying the option, is buying the right and would have to pay the premium. And the buyer of uh, put option would be the uh, option holder. So, uh, the example uh, consider a 1000 strike price. Um, in this case, the premium is 74.2 and the price of the asset on expiration is 1100. What would be the profit loss of put option holder? So, this is our uh, formula that we just uh, discussed and we have denoted the strike price with K and future spot price with ST. When we input the values, uh, K is 1000 and ST is 1100 minus the premium. So 1000 minus this would be minus 1100 and uh, let's solve this and we have a value of minus 74.2. So the loss from uh, this uh, for this call uh, put option holder is 74.20 if the price increases to 1100 and let's understand the logic behind this. Again, A is uh, going to sell the asset in this case because it is a long put. So instead of buying as uh, opposed to the uh, the long call, in long put, uh, the, the option holder is selling the asset. So option holder A is going to sell the asset to B at the agreed upon price of 1000. On the expiration, the price in the market the price at expiration is 1100. So in this case, A is not going to exercise this option. Why? Because A is not going to buy it for 1100 and assume that A do not hold the asset. A is not going to buy it 1100 and sell it on B for $1,000. Uh, that is obviously not going to happen. Uh, so uh, A is just not going to exercise this option. Uh, there is no profit and loss from buying and selling the uh, asset. The only loss that A would have is the premium that he paid and that was 74.20. One more way to look at this is that uh, say A is going to sell that asset, A holds the asset, A is going to sell it. Now instead of assuming that A do not hold the asset, A have the asset and instead of selling it to B for 1000 which is a lesser price, A was going to sell it for 11 minutes in the open market. In that case, uh, the premium is gone and A would had been better off by $74.20 if A hadn't made uh, or entered into this option contract. But the previous understanding is uh, more intuitive. So let's uh, look at the second case. In this case, instead of uh, the future spot price going to 11 minute, it is going to be $900. The formula is similar. Uh, we just input the value. So in, instead of taking 1100 as ST have used uh, 900. So the maximum of 0 or 100 would be 100 and now we have a profit of 25.8 and the intuition behind this is that A is going to sell for 1000 the agreed upon price. A do not hold the asset. In the open market now, the price on the expiration is 900. Future spot price is 900. So what A would do, A do not hold the asset, A is going to buy it from uh, the open market for 900 rupees. So this would be the buying price and is going to sell it to B. A is going to excise this option in this case and B would have to oblige. A is going to sell it for 1000 rupees. So the selling price is higher than the buying price that means we have a profit of 100 rupees from this transaction but we incurred a cost of 74 point so this is positive uh, but we incurred a cost of uh, 74.20 so in this case our total profit would be 25.80 so as opposed to the long call uh, the long put is op opposite. In long call, the uh, profit were increases when the ST increases. But in case of uh, long call, I'll show long put, the as the ST increases, the profit decreases or the loss increases. 
for the uh, long put or the buyer of the uh, the put option although in this case we are calling the buyer of the put option he is buying the option but not the asset the asset is being sold so the conclusion that we make is as st decreases profit of the put option holder increases we just saw it in the first example uh, in the second example the st decreased to 900 and the profit increased to 25 dollars and the maximum loss of option holder uh, is the premium and let me narrate this uh, how this can happen so in this case if the st instead of increases uh, to 1100 it increases to say 1000 in that case this uh, this would be minus 500 and again the maximum value would be zero and the answer would be the premium that is 74.20 so the maximum loss that can happen to the buyer of the uh, put option is the premium and remember for the buyer of the call option it was also the maximum loss was also the premium so for the option holders the maximum loss would always be the premium the paid and for the uh, the short uh, or the option writers the maximum profit would be the option uh, premium that they received so to minimize the risk of decrease in price so someone who is going to sell an asset and they have the risk that the price might decrease so they they might want to go for the long uh, put option uh, the last one is the seller of the put option the formula is minus maximum of st uh, strike price minus future spot price and plus premium because the sell of put option is selling the right and receiving the premium we have again the same example the strike price is 1000 premium is 74.2 and the expiration future spot price is 1100 so the formula is already understood our profit would be 74.20 and this was the exact loss uh, in case of the a long put option so remember the zero sum game uh, okay so uh, in case of uh, if the price decreases to 900 then the long put option holder would uh, the put option holder would have a profit whereas the put option uh, writer would have a loss and the conclusion would be as st decreases profit of the call option writer increases and the maximum profit for the option writer is the premium that he would receive and this is where we compare all the graphs and we can see that uh, this is the graph for long forward contract long short forward contract we discussed the long call option as st increases the profit increases for long call option holder but there is a maximum uh, limit for the losses the opposite is the case for short call the they have the maximum limit for the losses long put the profit uh, as the st decreases the profit increases and the maximum loss that they can occur is the premium and the maximum profit that short call option holder can have is the uh, is the premium he received so there are few further uh, terminologies that we are going to understand quickly and this is what we have already understood for a call option the call option is in the money uh, this in the money means it is profitable when the future spot price is higher than the strike price and this is without taking into consideration the premium this is without the premium this is the payoff right instead of profit so it is at the money when the future spot price is equal to strike price and out of money when future spot price is less than uh, strike price and we have already seen this that uh, the call this is for the long call remember not just generically for the call option this is for the long call and in long call we know that when st was greater than k then uh, we had profit and that is what we are co calling it the in the money case in the money is remember it is profit situation and when st is less than k then uh, 
then the long call option is out of money and when st is equal to k then long call option is add the money so that is no profit no loss equation the long put this is for long put again sorry long put uh, it is in the money when st is less than k and we just saw it in uh, a previous example when the price uh, future spot price in previous example for long put was 900 and the strike price was 1000 then in that case the long put option holder or the put option holder uh, had profit so in that case it is in the money when st is less than k when st is greater than k then this put uh, long put is out of money uh, this is exactly opposite to the long call option Let's have a practical example where this option can be used. Say an investor is optimistic about share prices of Lucky Cement uh, which will increase substantially. Say currently it is 80 rupees per share and then it might go to 100 rupees per share. If a higher amount of uh, developmental budget is allocated in annual budget. So when a higher amount of developmental budget is allocated in annual, annual budget that means that uh, the 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 demand of cement would increase and when the demand of cement would increase like a cement is obviously in the cement sector they would have um, higher sales and higher profits so uh, that would be reflected in the prices of uh, the share as soon as the budget gets out so it it's price uh, the investor is estimating that the price might go from 80 to 100 if the developmental if the the higher amount is allocated for the developmental budget in the in the annual budget however he is also wary of the potential fall in the share price say to 60 if something unfavorable comes out uh, with a new budget say for example yeah a higher taxes are uh, levied upon the cement sector or some other kind of um, restriction that would affect negatively affect the cement sector in that case the price might decrease say to 60 or lower than that but the point is the investor is not sure whether the price would increase or decrease and this is the best case when we can use the option contract when we are not sure whether the price might increase or not or it, they might decrease whether we would um, be better off excising the option not excising the option so, uh, but in case of forward contract, we would be, uh, we would have an obligation. So, the investor wants to limit his losses, but not limit the profit. He somehow wants that if the price increases to 100, then he might be able to say sell them. But if the price decreases to 60, then um, he would want to sell it to someone with whom he have entered the contract. So want to uh, limit the losses but not the profit what should this investor do so first of all the investor should buy a call option at uh, say rupees 90 or whatever the price is uh, for 1000 shares so this means that the investor is not actually buying the shares but rather he is buying the option to buy the share so the uh, there might be some premium for that uh, buying the uh, the option which in this case is 3 rupees so what this investor would do is he would uh, let's say this is an investor a he would buy an option which is call option an option to buy the asset buy the shares at 90 rupees so b would sell this lucky cement share at 90 rupees which is currently at 80 rupee in the market and a would pay three rupees per share today on expiration a would have a choice whether it to buy it from b if the price in the market increases to say 100 then a would instead of buying from the open market a would buy it from b at 90 rupees but in case if in the open market the prices on the expiration decrease to say 80 or 60 or 70 then instead of buying from b at 90 rupees a would want to buy it from uh, the open market so he have the option to excise or not excise so if the share price actually goes up to 100 
uh, then the profit would be because there are 1000 shares and the the selling price would be 1000 say he buys at 90 from b and sells immediately in the open market so the selling price would be 100 into the number of shares minus the buying price the buying price is 90 but additional cost of 3 so he would have a profit of 7000 immediately from this uh, this equation but if the price falls to rupees 60 he will not excise this option but his loss will be 3000 rupees which is the premium that he paid 3 rupees per share and 3000 for 1000 shares So the last topic of this uh, this chapter is types of traders and we have three types of traders that we have in derivative markets. Uh, the first one is hedger, the second is speculator and the third one is arbitrager. The hedger is the one who uses derivatives to reduce the risk that they may face from potential future movement in the market uh, prices. And in case of PIA, remember PIA what was not entering into the option contract with PSO to, to earn profit. The reason for entering into the option contract with PSO was to, to minimize the risk. So they were basically they are PIA is hedger because they are entering into option which is a derivative contract to reduce their risk. So a company might be better if it chooses not to hedge than if it chooses to hedge. And uh, we have seen multiple scenarios, uh, say they, they agreed upon 100 rupees per liter. And that is not necessary that the uh, price might increase, prices might decrease and then they might lose the premium that they paid. But again for hedgers, their idea is their objective is not to earn profit from this derivatives their idea is to minimize the risk and that is what i have written here the purpose of hedger is to reduce the risk there is no guarantee that the outcome of hedging will be better than the outcome without hedging and remember when we say hedging it is not just limited to the option contract it can can be the case of forward contract also so in forward contract this the example would make more um, better uh, uh, sense so if they agreed at 100 rupees and in open market the price decreased to 80 rupees on expiration then pia would be obliged uh, would uh, would have an obligation to buy it from pso at 100 rupees so in this case pia is worse off if it if they didn't had the hedging position at the first place but again, the, their idea is to minimize the risk. The second is speculator and speculator is the one who uses derivatives to, to earn profit. So they bet on the future direction of the market prices to earn profit. Their goal is not to minimize risk, but the goal is to earn profit. And the, the profit and loss calculations that we had in previous few slides, we were actually uh, assuming that the the parties are speculators. So either they are betting that the price of the asset will go up or they are betting that it will go down. So if they are betting that the prices would go up, then they would uh, want to go for long call and if they are betting for prices might go down, then they would have a long call. And the last one is arbitrager. Arbitrager is the one who earns the riskless profit by simultaneously entering into a transactions in two or more markets. So Say for example, uh, an arbitrager might enter into a long position in uh, forward market and might enter into a short position, the opposite position, the offsetting position in future market. This is the simplest example. And uh, in this case, the, the price might be say for example, they, they, they buy it at 100 and uh, the short position that they have in future market is say for example 101 this is, is somewhat the price difference in different markets there are price differences uh, but they are quickly uh, taken advantages uh, advantage of by the arbitrager and that's why one of the reason is uh, that there is an equilibrium in price is because of the arbitragers taking the uh, 
uh, exploiting the difference in the price. So arbitrager is someone who would earn riskless profit uh, by simultaneously entering into the transactions at two or more uh, market or two or more different contracts. So this is riskless because uh, on say 1st of Jan they are entering into the both the forward contract and the future contract. So at that specific moment on that specific uh, you know date 1st of Jan they know that their profit would be one rupee per uh, or one dollar per um, per unit. So so that is riskless in a sense that no matter whatever the price in the market are their profit is going to be uh, fixed and it would not change. So that it is a riskless profit. Right? 